Good day viewers, today we are going to cover adjusted present value, also known as the APV. Principles The adjusted present value APV separates the cash flows according to their risks before discounting them. That is separating the cash flows from operations and also cash flows from financing. Cash flows associated with operations are affected by business risk and therefore they should be discounted using the cost of capital that risk flex only business risk. This is called the ungeared cost of equity. Cash flows associated with financing are affected by financial risk and therefore they should be discounted using either the cost of debt or the risk-free rate. These are the cash flows associated with uh, the company borrowing funds. Cash flows associated with operations are the usual cash flows for net present value calculations. Cash flows associated with financing are present value of issue costs to present value of tax saving on interest payments present value of interest saved net of tax by obtaining subsidized debt. Sum up all present values. The result is the adjusted present value. The comments are the same as for the net present value. So when calculating the adjusted present value, you will first of all calculate the net present value from the cash flows associated with operations then also calculate the cash flows calculate the cash flows um, the present value of the cash flows associated with financing then we sum them to get all all of them then we get the adjusted present value then we have got the assumed knowledge the assumed knowledge is uh, you are now able to calculate npv and you are now able to dis to do the to discount the cash flows you are also able to ungear a geared equity beta to turn it from equity beta to an asset beta. You know how to use the Kaplan formula and you know the Kaplan formula. And you know how to how and when to use the annuity factors. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, this is the name of my channel, Expect Accounting Student in YouTube. You can pause the video and subscribe if you haven't done so. Now let's do the calculation of the adjusted present value calculation. We will use the ACCA June 2014 question 2 to calculate the adjusted present value. So let's go there and uh, read the requirements. We would only do part A. Required. Calculate the adjusted present value APV for the project, correcting any errors made in the net present value estimate above. Conclude whether the project should be accepted or not and show all relevant calculations for 15 marks. Then B. Comment on the corrections made to the original NPV estimate and explain the adjusted present value approach taken in part A, including any assumptions made. This is for 10 marks, totaling 25 marks. Now let's read the scenario then before we answer question A. Oh. You have recently commenced working for Buranco and are reviewing a four-year project with the company which the company is considering for investment. The project is in a business activity which is very different from the Buranco's current line of business. The following net present value estimate has been made for the project. All figures are in million dollars. Yay! 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, sales revenue, direct project costs, interest, profit, tax at 20%, investment, cash flows, discount factor at 7%, present values. 
Net present value is negative 1.65 million and therefore the recommendation is that the project should not be accepted. In calculating the net present value of the project, the following notes were made. Since the real cost of capital is used to discount cash flows, neither the sales revenue nor the direct project costs have been inflated. It is estimated that the inflation rate applicable to sales revenue is 8% per year and to the direct project cost is 4% per year. The project will require an initial investment of 38 million of this 16 million relates to plant and machinery, which is expected to be sold for 4 million when the project ceases after taking any taxation and inflation impact into account. Tax allowable depreciation is available on the plant and machinery at 50% in the first year, followed by 25% per year thereafter on a reducing balance basis. A balancing adjustment is available in the year the plant and machinery is sold. Buranko pays 20% tax on its annual taxable profit. No tax allowable depreciation is available on the remaining investment assets and they will have a nil value at the end of the project. Buranko uses either a nominal cost of capital of 11% or a real cost of capital of 7% to discount all projects given that the rate of inflation has been stable at 4% for a number of years. Interest is based on Buranko's normal borrowing rate of 150 basis points over the 10-year government yield rate. At the beginning of each year, Buranko will need to provide working capital of 20% of the anticipated sales revenue for the year. Any remaining working capital will be released at the end of the project. Working capital and depreciation have not been taken into account in the net present value calculation above. Since depreciation is not a cash flow and all the working capital is retained at the end of the project. It is anticipated that the project will be financed entirely by debt, 60% of which will be obtained from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government, which lends money at a rate of 100 basis points below the 10-year government, de government debt yield rate of 2.5%. Issue costs related to raising the finance are 2% of the gross finance required. The remaining 40% will be funded from Buranko's normal borrowing sources. It can be assumed that the debt capacity available to Buranko is equal to the actual amount of debt finance raised for the project. Buranko has identified a company Linduko, which operates in the same line of business as that of the project it is considering. Linduko is financed by 40, 40 million shares trading at $3.50 each and 34 million debt trading at $94 per hundred. Linduko's equity beta is estimated at 1.5. The current yield on government treasury bills is 2% and it is estimated that the market risk premium is 8%. Linduco pays tax at an annual rate of 20%. Both Buranko and Linduco pay tax in the same year as when profits are earned. Required. Calculate the estimated present value APV for the adjusted present value APV for the project correcting any errors made in the net present value estimate above and conclude whether the project should be accepted or not. Show all relevant calculations for 15 marks. So when calculating the APV, we will first of course all of all calculate the NPV of the cash flows from operations, then calculate the present value of cash flows from the financing side. So now when calculating the NPV, the usual we will start with doing the workings. Working number one will be sales. We are told that these sales were not inflated. 
Since the real cost of capital is used to discount, this is note number one. Since the real cost of capital is used to discount cash flow, neither the sales revenue nor the direct project costs have been inflated. This is wrong. Why is wrong? Because um, the cash flows have got different inflation rates. The sales revenue have got an inflation rate of 8% and the direct project cost has got an inflation of 4%. So if the cash flows have got, they are affected by different inflation rates, we cannot use the real rate of capital to discount the cash flows. We have to use the nominal rate. Now let's inflate the the sales revenue. We we'll first of all have our uninflated sales revenue is um they are there from the the NPV that was calculated. Now we are told that uh, the inflation is 1.8%. So we'll say 1.08 to the power for the first year is to the power 1. Then if we get that, we can copy the formula up to the end. We have inflated ourselves. Now we go to our direct project costs. For year one, we have got 13.82. For year two, 21.96. Year three, 29.44. Year four, 16.28. Let's inflate those we are given here in note number one that uh, the inflation is 4%. So we'll say direct product cost multiplied by 1.04 to the power 1 for the first year. Then um, we can copy the formula up to the fourth year. We have inflated our direct project cost. Then now we go to working for the working capital. Let's pick the note way we are told about the working capital. It's note number six. At the beginning of each year, Pura and Co. will need to provide working capital of 20% of the anticipated sales revenue for the year. So the anticipated sales revenue for year one is 24.87. So the working capital should be at the beginning of year one. The beginning of year one is year zero. So what we'll simply say, we'll simply say anticipated sales for year one multiplied by 20%. We'll get 4.97 from year zero up to year three. Why not putting year four? If we put year four, we'll be saying this um, working capital will be used in year five, where the project ceases in year four. So we have to end in year four. Then now the movement will be zero minus what will be incurred in year zero. That is 4.97. Then in year one, we'll say the amount in year zero minus the amount in year one. We do the same for all the years up to year four. Copy the formula there. If we can check the formula for year four, if we can check the formula for year four, it's saying year three minus year four, year four, which has got zero here because we do not have to have the working capital in year four. So now this is the a working capital movement that we have. Then uh, we now go to capital allowances. Let's pick the note where we are given capital allowances. It's note number three. Tax allowable depreciation is available on the plant and machinery at 50% in the first year, followed by 25% per year thereafter on a reducing balance basis. 
A balancing adjustment is available in the year the plant and machinery is sold. Now, we are also told here that uh, of the, in note number two, the project will require an initial investment of 38 million. Of this, 16 million relates to plant and machinery, which is expected to be sold for 4 million. So we come to the total here. We have got 16 million worth of plant. It will be sold for 4 million. So how much is left? The depreciable amount is 12 million that we need to depreciate. That we, we are allowed to grant the capital allowances. So in the first year, we say 16 million multiplied by 50%. We get eight. In the second year, we will say it's reducing. So we'll say 16 million minus 8 million that is incurred in year, that is allowed in year one, multiplied by 25% the second year. The third year, we will also say a uh, Reducing balance basis, we say 16 minus 8, that was allowed in the first year, minus 2, that was allowed in the second year, multiplied by 25%. We get 1.5. Then in the fourth year, we, we are told we will get the balancing allowance. So the balancing allowance now will say, Total allowable capital allowances, which is 12, 12, made up of 16 minus 4, less everything that was uh, allowed in year 1, in year 2, and in year 3. So the capital allowance for year 4 becomes 50, 0 0.5 million. Then we come to tax now, tax calculation. Our tax calculation will say sales. We will pick ourselves from the top. I encourage everyone to use this format for calculating the tax. Then for direct, direct project cost, it's that one. Then we copy the formula there. Then capital allowances, we are given here. We can copy the formula up to year 4. Then we get our total. Then we can copy the formula there. Then we get our tax. Our tax is uh, 20%. Then we can copy the formula there. Then now, we have to ask ourselves uh, of the cost of capital that we need to use. We cannot use 11% as uh, this project is on a different line of business as uh, our normal business lines for Purang Co. But we are given here a proxy company. The proxy company is Lean to Co, which are, is in the same business as our project. So we take our the beta for the equity beta of the proxy company, which is one point five. Then um, we we'll have to ungear to remove the financial risk, the gearing, the risk caused by the gearing, we have to ungear this 1.5 so that at least we'll get the asset beta that has got only business risk in it. Because when calculating the adjusted present value, we want the cost of equity ungeared. The cost of equity that is not affected by the gearing. Because um, after calculating the NPV, we we'll calculate the present value of the financing cash flows we will be considering now the financial risk. So now for Lean to Co, the value of equity we are given here is 40 million shares at $3.20. So we'll say 40 multiplied by 
we get 128. Then the value of debt of uh, lean to co we are saying we are told it's 34 million multiply trading at 94 per hundred. And also the tax rate for lean to co is what is 20%. So the value of debt it should be value of debt net of tax. So the value of debt will be 34 multiplied by 94 divided by 100 multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate of 0, 0,2. Then we get that. Then we can uh, sum to get the value of the whole company of lean to core which is that one 153.57 then now we have to ungear this um, equity bid I assume everyone knows the formula for ungearing so I will simply say one I will simply say 1,5 which is the equity bid multiplied by value of equity divided by value of equity and value of debt i will get the equity the asset beta of 1.25 i will also assume that uh, people now know the formula for the capam then now we we have to use that asset beta to calculate the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model right here we will say risk-free rate of return the risk-free rate of return is equivalent to the current yield on government treasury bills which is two percent so i'll say two percent plus the asset beta multiplied by the market risk premium of eight percent We get 12% as the cost of um, equity and geared. Then we we'll use this percentage to discount our cash operating cash flows. Let's calculate our base case NPV starting with sales. We get our sales there. We can copy the formula there. We also get our direct production costs here. Project cost, can copy the formula there. We can also get our tax paid. There is no delay in this question. Then our investment, we are told, we are told in note number two that the initial investment will be 38 million. And at the end of the year, fourth year, the plant will be sold for four million. Then we get our um, working capital movement. Let's go to the working capital. Here is our working capital. We can come from working number three. We get that. Then we can copy the formula up to the end. There we sum up everything to get our cash flows. Then um, we discount our cash flows using that 12%. So in year one, zero is one. In year one, it's one divided by 1.12. In year two, is year one rate divided by 1.12. Then um, we can copy the formula up to year four. Then what would be our present values? It would be cash flow multiplied by the discount factor. Then we can... Now we can calculate the NPV now. The NPV now would be the sum of all the present values from year 0 up to year 4. We get 8.61. Then those using the computer-based exam, they can use the Excel formula, which is the NPV, 
we are it's asking the rate which the rate is 12 percent then uh, it's now asking for the cash flows from year one up to year four then uh, we subtract the initial investment that is the cash flow from year zero we get the same answer is 8.61 million now we have to calculate the present value of the issue costs let's go to where we are told about the issue costs we are saying issue costs related to raising the finance are two percent of the gross finance required so the finance required in year zero is 42.97 million so if 47 42.97 million is not gross it means 42.9 7 million is uh, 98 percent and the 2 percent is the issue cost so we we'll simply say 42,97 divided by 0, 0,98 we get the gross uh, the gross um, the gross amount then we have to multiply this gross amount by 2 percent to get the issue cost we get the issue cost of 0 0.88 we cannot discount these issue costs because they are happening in year zero they are already in year zero terms then now we have to we have now to calculate the present value of tax saving on interest payments now we are told here that it is anticipated that the project will be financed entirely by debt, 60% of which will be obtained from the from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government. So the government will subsidize 60% of the required capital. So we we'll have 60%. The required capital is 42 times 42,97 times what is the interest paid on the government loan? 60% of which will be obtained from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government, which lends money at a rate of 100 basis points below the 10 year government yield of 1,2. 100% basis points, if you want to convert it to percentages, you divide by 100. So 100 divided by 100 is 1%. So they are saying the government lends uh, its uh, loan 1% below the 10-year debt yield. The 10-year debt yield is 2.5. So the government lends its money at 1.5%. Then this... Um, this uh this amount will save us tax at a rate of 20 percent we'll be getting this for four years as the project will run for four years so we'll go and get the the discount factor for four years we'll use the debt like i said here we will use the cost of debt to discount the financing cash flows so now we we'll have to discount go for discount rate for four years at four percent that will be an annuity annuity tables four percent four years is three comma six three comma six three zero so come we'll come here and multiply by an annuity factor of 3,630. We get that much. Then uh, on a normal loan, it will be 40% as the government has provided 60%. 40% multiplied by 42.97. The normal loan now, we are told here in note number five that interest is based on Buran cost normal borrowing rate of 150 basis point over 10 year government yield debt. 
So 150 basis points to percentages, we say 150 divided by 100, which is 1,5% uh, above 2.5. So 1,5 plus 2,5 is 4%. So multiplied by 4%, multiplied by 20%, multiplied by the annuity factor that we have just... Uh, seen the 3.60 we get that then um, we sum these uh, present values we get 0 0.78 then now we we have to calculate the present value of net interest saved as the government has given us 60 percent we have saved interest because the government debt is uh, the government debt is what has got lower interest. The government debt is its interest is payable at one comma five percent, as is one percent below two comma five percent, which is one comma five percent. So we have saved. We were supposed to borrow this at four percent, four percent coming from one fifty basis points over hundred, which is one comma five plus two comma five, which is four percent. We're supposed to get the 60% at 4%, but we got the 60% of the debt at uh, 1,5. So we have saved 2,5%. So we'll say 60% multiplied by the debt of 42.97 uh, multiplied by the interest that is saved 2,5%. Net of tax, so it should be 1 minus 0, 0,2. 2 is the 20%. Multiply then by the annuity factor of 3.630. We get that. Then now to calculate the to calculate the adjusted present value, we have to add the net present value, which is called the base case net present value, plus present value of issue costs, plus present value of tax saving on interest payments, plus present value of net interest saved. We get our adjusted present value as 10.38 million. As this is positive, like I said, the comment is the same as the net present value. As the adjusted present value is positive, so the project is financially sound and it has to be accepted as it is to the shareholders' wealth. This is what you are supposed to do for 15 marks. Then a brief comment on um, part B. He's saying, comment on the corrections made to the original net present value estimate and explain the adjusted present value approach taken in part A, including any assumptions made. So here, the corrections that we made, interest is not a, in a, a relevant cash flow for NPV calculation as interest is included in the discount factor or the cost of equity that is used there. To discount the cash flow so the absolute interest payment is not a relevant cash flow again the correction that was made uh, sales revenue and direct project costs were not inflated of which this was wrong as the sales revenue has got a different inflation rate and pro direct project costs is also a different pro uh, inf inflation rate so they need to be inflated and also another correction was the discount factor of 7%, which is real uh, cost of capital. We cannot use the real rate as uh, the inflation rates are different. And also when calculating the, the adjusted present value, we have to use the cost of equity ungeared. So we have removed that one. And also in this... Uh, NPV calculation, the error that was there, the working capital was excluded. We mustn't exclude working capital even if the working capital have to be recouped at the end of the project like this one. But different working capitals in the different years 
will be affected by different uh, will have different uh, present values it as it will be affected by different discount rates even if when you add um, the inflation from year zero up to year four we get the sum as zero they are in different uh, years which have got different time value of money which are also affected by different um uh, present values also to exclude depreciation was okay but now when calculating tax we have to include the capital allowances this is a brief uh, the assumptions also the assumptions made is that um, all the cash flows will will all the estimates of the cash flows will be true that means that all the there will be no deviations from the cash flows and also the tax rate will be 20% there will be no change in the tax in the tax rate during the year and also that the estimate of the the estimate of the residual value of the plant at the end of 4 years will be 4 is accurate thank you very much for this uh, for taking your time to watch this video i hope it's uh, it it has helped and you should be watching this video time and again and also practice until you get to the correct answer thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe to my channel